Hi guys, Dan McCoy with R.O. McCoy here today to talk about Whitley County Bridge 17 and how monumental it is in our industry. For the last several years, as you know, we've been playing with some new things in Indiana, specifically this last year with Element 5 used as internal cure. Uh, the developers of that product actually had another um, nanosilica come into play which could be beneficial in cement reduction. Now this is beneficial for both engineering and environmental reasons. With this bridge we use the product of liquid fly ash to reduce the cementitious content by about 100 pounds. A normal class C in-dot uh, bridge specified concrete would contain 658 pounds of cement with an additional 3% of microsilica, which gets our total cementitious content to about 678 pounds. Now what we've done with this mix is we've brought it down to 580 pounds of straight cement and we've replaced the additional cementitious content with eight ounces of liquid fly ash along with four ounces of internal cure for the benefit of, of both engineering and the environment. So what we wanted to do was maintain the specification requirements outlined for what the Indiana Department of Transportation is considered to be good bridge concrete. So as far as compression strength goes and as far as how the curing process over a seven day period or even shorter than would go. So we went about that, uh, it started back in July of last year. We took the normal class C bridge mix that I would say with the 3% microsilica. We placed maturity sensors in those and then we analyzed that mix and after about 28 days we analyzed what we were getting on that and it turned out to be around 5500 PSI. Now this is great, this is exactly what we expected. By the time you take into account cement efficiency or the hydration and if we look at uh, compressive strength in PSI per pound of cementitious you get around 8 PSI per pound of cementitious in that mix. What we were hoping to do was reduce the cement content, as said before, for several reasons. Uh, the environmental sustainability portion of it, and then the second reason was, can we get by with less and still maintain the specification in order to reduce shrinkage potential? As we know, it's actually the paste in the concrete matrix that shrinks. So if we can reduce that paste content, then we pull out the ability for it to want to crack. And I think that's integral in structure longevity. Um, as you open up cracks, water retains. I think, I think we get the picture as far as sustainability and how reducing cracking can do that. And one of the ways to do that is to reduce the shrinkage in the paste. So with that 580 pound cement, in addition with the liquid fly ash and the internal cure, uh, to create that pozzolanic reactivity, for our strength gain over 28 days. We place sensors in this, and surprisingly, uh, we overshot the specification. Uh, 28 days, uh, we had some really good breaks, and then the maturity ended up on this to be uh, around 7,200 PSI. So if we go back to what we were saying and we're considering our efficiency, and by my definition at least, now we're around 12 PSI per pound of cementitious material. That's good news. So we've taken water out. As a matter of fact, out of this structure, we've taken about uh, 800 gallons of water out of the entire structure just by changing the mix design. Now that's good environmentally, number one, but number two, it's also good engineering. Because now, of that total volume of water that we've replaced, that's less of the overall total volume that went into the structure that eventually has to leave the structure or wasn't yielded to hydration. So we're doing exciting things in Indiana. We're gonna be looking um, furthermore at this mix and see what we can do. And that brings together some kind of mini coalition that we're trying to build uh, for the US 30 coalition in ways of integrating smart infrastructure and technology into hopefully a uh, future smart highway system in US 30. So this type of technology is exactly what we're looking for uh, to be able to utilize in this new design. There are several people that we need to thank for all this coming together. As I said, this is the first bridge in the world, um, and it's a full depth structural slab. So we're not relying on beams. Uh, it is the concrete that's holding up the structure. The people that we really need to thank for this are the people that took a chance for the, the risks that could have been imposed for trying something new in civil engineering. Uh, one of those especially is the Whitley County Highway Department 
and especially Brandon Forrester, who's the Whitley County Highway Engineer, uh, to sit down with us. Um, that would be the Ready Mix Company, who gets huge kudos for coming up uh, with this uh, mix design and the proportions of liquid fly ash and internal cure to go into it. Um, so that would be Speedway Ready Mix. And Steve Crawford's done some amazing work. He's the director of quality control there of coming up with these mix designs that we've been trying. The second entity that we need to thank overall is, is Specification Products. They've done a great job of almost unsurmountable data that they've collected. Um, and that, that's both in absorption, uh, scanning electron microscope testing, and in destructive testing um, and shrinkage bar analysis. All these things are, are very crucial in an engineer making his or her decision in what to implement in final design. Uh, another person to thank, definitely, that, that I've listened to intently, and if, if you guys have listened to me talk before, I cannot leave out uh, Professor Tyler Lay, because in this mix, we rolled everything together and took the chance, uh, even though we knew that the chance was going to turn out, of using the optimized mix design, which is the tarantula curve. So we started with aggregates. And then from aggregates and making workability a concern as we did um, pump this bridge. So when you lower the cementitious content and that paste volume goes down, which is what you want to get rid of things as curling, shrinkage, you inevitably most times have a harder time with the pumpability and the workability for the, those reasons as you take that lubricant out. And utilizing the optimized mix design via the tarantula curve was definitely a factor in making this project a success. So I can't ignore that for a minute. Uh, there are a couple other researchers that we really need to thank. Uh, one is Professor Luna Liu from Purdue University, and she's done an amazing job of really looking at the matrix and the structure that's made up and what I've been saying for the last year and a half of what I think it's doing. And she's now coming up with things that are validating what my thought process was as far as matrix structure for the liquid fly ash nanosilica particles and the internal cure nanosilica particles and how it builds a denser matrix to stay there and creates pozzolanic activity. All great things. Another person that we talked to quite a bit was Dr. John Belkowitz and his specialty is nanosilicas and colloidal silicas. So it was invaluable to talk to him as far as the science behind the mix design and what was going to be going on. The, another person that we have to thank, uh, by far everybody knows this name, is Dr. Jason Weiss and his work with concrete in general. What, what a fantastic addition that his research has been to understanding how to increase the longevity and service life of structures. So you pull all of this together and we continue working, we continue making effects. Um, as far as my environmental concerns go, on this one, we saved enough cement in the job to basically equivalent to 11 acres of trees. That's great. We saved 800 gallons of water just in the mix design. That's great. And then with the addition of the internal cure, of which I placed no wet cure on this structure, and I placed no white pig cure compound on this structure. And post-inspection, we have no shrinkage cracks. We have no evidence of anything that would be detrimental to the fact of what I did. That in itself, if you take an average evaporation rate over seven days or 168 hour cure period of wet cure, you can come up loosely with about 5,000 gallons of water that was saved in not wet curing this structure. And I think that's, that's definitely something to look forward to in the future as we try to look to save or conserve our freshwater sources. So with all that, I would encourage everyone to get out there in the engineering realm and in the environmental realm and start asking these questions about what can we change on an upstream component from design and material analysis to make things better and carry those forward in the buzzwords of the day of RD&D, so research, development, and deployment. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here in northeastern Indiana. So that's my update for today. Thanks, guys.